Good old CBR.com. One of the worst websites out there. I don't know who's worse when it comes to comic book news. Is it Bleeding Cool or CBR.com? Because both of them are bad. But CBR.com is definitely trying to become the Kotaku or Polygon of comic books. (laughs) They're well on their way. CBR.com just exists to give me content to laugh at and talk about at this point. I don't I don't know who else goes there because the comic book market isn't doing that great. I'm going to take a look at the sales that came out for January in a second because those are out too. But I wanted to spend some time on this article because there's some funny stuff in here, some cope. 10 groundbreaking comics that aged poorly. The comics medium relies on game-changing comics that update the medium. However, Decades later, these groundbreakers haven't aged well. Now, what's funny about this article is you've got Luke Cage on the front. That's him right here in his 70s form. Different time, different culture. However, Luke Cage, as goofy as he looks here, is groundbreaking because of the fact that that he was one of the first black characters to get his own series. Black Panther, I think, however, I don't know if Black Panther predates him or not with his own series. I don't know when the first Black Panther issue came out. His first appearance was in Fantastic Four. That was in the 60s. But uh, there's a lot of credit that I think Marvel should get for that time because this was... Pretty groundbreaking. I mean, 60s and 70s, pretty pretty racist time in a lot of ways. However, it was thanks to characters like this that led the way for things to get a lot better. But it's funny to me, (laughs) during Black History Month, which started yesterday, they decided to publish an article uh, trashing this book. I don't know how woke that makes them. Seems kind of, seems kind of racist based on their own terms because they're quick to call everybody else racist. Uh, this article is funny. I want to. I'll come back to some of the other stuff on here, but uh, they put this on here at number four for their badly aged characters or books. Uh, Luke Cage, hero for hire, reinforced too many stereotypes. Uh, Just about every comic book character ran on stereotypes back then. Uh, But I think the fact that this book existed uh, kind of overrides all that stuff, if you want to really kind of talk about it. But they're saying that it was put out to capitalize on blacks, blacksploitation. They use an X there. I didn't even know this was a thing. I mean, I'm going to ask, does it really matter? Because this character still exists. And I think that it's kind of groundbreaking that it existed in the first place in the 70s. But CBR decides that it's a book that relied too much on obvious racial stereotypes. And that even today, when brought up in contemporary comics, the golden age of comics to CBR.com, they consider today's comics the greatest ever made. Uh... He's embarrassed about it. Shouldn't be. I mean, this this is what helped change. Characters like him, Storm, Black Panther, back in the day, like, were transcending characters. And uh, actual books that touched on real things and actually made a difference, unlike today, where characters argue their pronouns in the midst of battle which actually happened. I wish I had that panel pulled up, but two characters were fighting and they actually argued about their pronouns and uh, respected them while trading punches. That's modern comics. But yeah, this book, it's just funny. It was funny to see this from CBR.com. They also trash Superman, called Superman Garbage. Because of its simplistic art. This book was made in 1938. 
really just great comic book fans over here at cbdart.com, and they make fun of League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, and they make fun of Preacher, Trash, Miracle Man, the Alan Moore version, of course. Uh, that's a if you've never read that, you should definitely check it out. Uh, the Dark Knight, Fink Miller on here a bunch of times. Uh, this is the book that reinvented Batman, by the way. I don't think he would have Batman like he is today without this book, but of course it's it's just too violent, and it's a mouthpiece for Frank Miller. They hate Frank Miller. Then, of course, they trash Civil War, probably, honestly, one of the better Marvel events if you want to really talk about it. Uh, Neil Gaiman is even on here, <laughs> which is funny. Uh, the Killing Joke, one of the greatest Batman books. Uh, this was bad because it normalized violence against women. And, of course, you don't know. Uh, in this book, the Joker shoots Barbara Gordon in the spine and causes her to go paralyzed. And to get to Jim Gordon, it's implied that he did some pretty nasty things to her. They never quite outright say it, but they definitely imply it. Uh, this is a crazy story. If you never read The Killing Joke, do yourself a favor. You could even watch that that short animated film that Warner Brothers made not that long ago. It's rated R. You skip the original one. It adds nothing to it and except it makes it look like Batgirl was in love with Batman and and stuff that was stupid. You can skip that. It's like thirty minutes. Actually, follows the book to a T. Uh, Sin City, of course, also is uh, outdated uh, because it's misogynist. Uh, CBR.com, just a king of content out there for comic books. They think today is the golden age of comics. <laughs> they think today is the best shit ever. Garbage website. I don't know how they exist. Just like Polygon and Kentaku, I I don't know what keeps them afloat, but. Let's take a look at some comic book sales, too. DC Comics not doing that good, as usual. Marvel up there, Spider-Man comics galore. But once again, uh, the only thing that's on here, DC Comics-wise, is mostly Batman shit. Lazarus, Planet Assault on Krypton, that's an event. Detective Comics is on here at 46 and Batman at 33, Batman again at 32, Dark Knights of Steel. Well, that's still in the name. I, th I think that that's kind of a bait-and-switch book on that. But let's see, what else do we have here? Oh, look at that. Superman back on the list. What's funny about this is, okay, so you have the, the gay Superman, John Kent, and then you have Clark Kent, Cal L Superman, who's in Action Comics back on the list because he's now back on Earth again. Uh, you have that, the, the gay Superman book, not on this list at all, but it's selling so well, according to Tom King. It's selling so well on Amazon, on the Comixology area, which is shutting down. Comixology is shutting down. Well, not shutting down, but it's run by a skeleton crew. Uh, so I'm sure digital comics are selling so good, right, Tom King? So you have Action Comics back on the list. Why is that? It's because it has Cal al back. But the ending book, the Superman book, which had gay Superman in it, not on the list at all, and that ended. The last issue didn't even make this chart. That's sad and embarrassing. So you finally got a Superman book back on here. Amazing. Then you go back up, Batman Superman World's Finest, another Batman book. Batman Spawn, DC Comics, then Batman, One Bad Day, DC Comics, Lazarus Planet Alpha. That's an event, but it's funny. It's still kind of Batman-centric because the Lazarus pits are a Batman idea. They come from Ra's al Ghul, which is a Batman property. Batman and the Joker, Deadly Duo, at number 10. And then Nightwing, number 100, at 4. And then, of course, Batman at number 2. What's the point? What am I getting at? Everything on here that's DC Comics is a freaking Batman book. <laughs> but comics are booming. They're doing the best they've ever done. But once again, months and months and months of just Batman. Finally, a Superman book on here. Uh, that's because they brought back the real Superman. And then, of course, graphic novels. Uh, this is always fun to look at. So this is the comic book shit. We don't even have the 
quotations, adult graphic novels out. That, that listing isn't out yet. That's where you actually have the entire market. You have bookstores. This is based on comic book stores only. And what's on here? No DC Comics except for Nightwing hardcover and Nice House on the Lake. I think that's going to be a Netflix series. Of course, you have some image, boom, all that stuff on here. But uh, you actually have Chainsaw Man on here. Like, it's funny to see these selling. These are selling from comic book stores. Coming on the comic book store chart. IDW about to go out, but the last Ronin sells. This book actually sells over here, too. But, you know, the market's just doing great. The best it's ever been, they say. The golden age of comic books is today. <laughs> if you like Spider-Man and Batman, sure. Because even on the even on this chart, it's a bunch of Spider-Man shit. Gold Goblin is on here. That's a Spider-Man book. Miles Morales is on here, number two. Now, usually they dip off, but that's still up there at five. It'd be interesting to see if that carries on. Anyway, comics are booming. Let me know what you guys think about all this. I'd like to hear from you in the comments below. Also, if you would, please like, subscribe, share the video. Make sure you're still subscribed. Hit that notification bell. Check out my Rumble and Locals, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace. Make sure to check out my Locals. There's a link in the description. It's a fun community that I'm trying to build over here. If you don't want to support me on YouTube, you can come over here. None of that money goes to YouTube. You also can just come over here for free. But if you are a supporter over here, I do plan on doing an extra live stream once a month and throwing links to the supporters so you can actually come on and have a supporter live stream with me. Also, it's a good place to catch all of my content. You don't have to worry about notifications like YouTube. They'll definitely work over here. So come check out my locals.